You're watching Retirement Talk with Eric Carney, Southwest Florida's retirement television. He's an author, a radio host, a fiduciary, and Southwest Florida's premier investment advisor. Here is senior investment advisor, Eric Carney. And welcome to Retirement Talk with Eric Carney. My name is Cynthia DeFazio, and I'm joined today by Eric Carney and Joseph Lanza of Retirement Wealth Advisors. Eric, how are you? Great, Cynthia. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for asking. And Joseph, how are you today? I'm ready for another show, Cynthia. I am too. I'm so ready for today's show because this is a great show. We're going to talk a little bit about recovery yeah. because, wow, so many people went through tumultuous times, the stock market being up and down. And you have actually pioneered, Eric, the portfolio recovery strategy mm -hmm. let's talk about that where did it evolve from and why is it so important yeah first of all I want to say I'm really excited about this today because this is something that I've built a long time ago it was built out of a need and necessity mm -hmm. and what we saw was we've been through many kinds of difficult markets it actually started back during 9-11 and we're gonna go through a little bit of history with you guys because we want to understand why a portfolio recovery strategy is so important and what we saw after 9-11 was you had a devastated US domestic economy and so what happened was there were a lot of big companies and we're typically used to investing in blue chip companies. Mm -hmm. They're safe over time, they're a good place to be, but all of a sudden comes 9-11, and these big companies now all of a sudden didn't know how to act to this ever-changing thing. And remember, we're just getting off the tech wreck of 1999, now all of a sudden when all these big cap companies start to get back on their feet, they get walloped again by 2008. So if you take a look at a company like IBM, mm -hmm. IBM really between 2001 and 2011 is actually pretty flat. Mm -hmm. And so people have to realize that when you look up the period between 2001 and 2011, that was known as the lost decade for large cap stocks. Mm -hmm. If you were in those, you more than likely suffered now if you had a portfolio recovery strategy, which we actually enacted back in 2001, now all of a sudden you realize, what if some asset classes are down, but they don't come back? So this is the contrarian part of me that said, well, wait a minute, what happens if your portfolio does not recover? And what had happened is in 2002, now all of a sudden we're looking at gold, precious metals, real estate, and even energy, something that's more tangible. Those actually recovered very nicely. It was something completely different than the blue chip stocks. That's when I realized we have to enact a portfolio recovery strategy. And so <clears throat> we built this whole entire thing saying, look, whatever happens in the markets, we have to be able to recover. And this is where a lot of advisors say, oh, don't worry, it'll come back, just hang in there. I don't believe that all the time. Mm. Now all of a sudden you have a volatile market, you have changing interest rates, inflation is through the roof, you have a fast growing economy, and then you go right into a slow growing economy. You have a lot of political infighting that's going on. You have world events that are taking over. This is not the same stock market that it was in 2001, 2008, 2011, 2015. It changes every year. Your playbook had better change too. So this portfolio recovery strategy that we've created, we embrace it every single year mm -hmm. because when the next shoe drops, we want to understand how can we actually step in and take advantage of this. This is the difference between a dynamic money manager and just a financial salesperson out there who really looks to buy and hold and, and hopes for the best. That is not a strategy. Right. And Eric, I should ask you, actually, how do you build long-term stability in someone's portfolio and plan? What are the tools that you like to implement? Mm -hmm. Relevancy. Number one, we <clears throat> want to make sure that the portfolio is always relevant. It's always up to date. It's consistently being monitored managed and maintained. We want to understand that the clients has certain needs. We have to be able to not only meet those needs, but sometimes exceed those needs. And a lot of times when people sign their money over to us, they're like, Eric, I don't want to hear about the market. This is your job. 
This is where you're <laughs> going to find tools and you're going to reiterate what we're supposed to do with this. So again, the, re the re portfolio recovery strategy was enacted in order to take advantage of these down markets or these difficult markets. And the volatility, the risk, um, the market pullbacks and corrections, they're here to stay. They're not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we're constantly looking at and saying, okay, how do we get to the next step? And our clients really love this because they feel like we're constantly paying attention to this. I love the portfolio recovery strategy. It's, I know you do. I can tell. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, you are very passionate about it. Jeff, I want to ask you a question, please. We know it's important to reduce market exposure to build a better portfolio. So how much of a retiree's portfolio should be exposed in the market? Well, this answer really depends on who you're asking. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody, but it really comes down to three different things. And that's your age, your income needs, and the current investment landscape. Because there's a lot of rule of thumbs that will say if you're X age, you should be X percentage invested in the market. But a lot of these are outdated. And if we use one, for example, take, take last year and an 80-year-old client. That client, based on this rule of thumb, should have 70% invested in bonds and 30% invested in stocks. Well, due to interest rates last year and bonds having quite literally one of the worst years in history, the amount of, that, in, the amount of volatility in that portfolio would be way more than we would ever want for an 80-year-old client. Mm. So instead, we have to take a step back and analyze the current markets and also take into consideration their age and income needs before we can ever say how much they should have invested and in what. Mm. And what are some steps that you do, Joseph, to actually uncover that? Well, it really starts with discovering all their income needs first, uh, how they view investing as well, what's their risk tolerance, how mm -hmm. much assets do they have, what are their withdrawal rates from the assets. That all plays into effect of how much money is going to be invested and in what, how aggressive can the portfolio be, or maybe how conservative the portfolio needs to be. It's all tied back into the client's needs and their wishes, health care, taxes, inflation. It's all like one big circle that the financial plan holds everything in and kind of just revolving. It's like you have a question about your situation, it's within the financial plan so everything stays within there okay well gentlemen I know you have a very special offer to present to our viewers at home this is the perfect time for us to open the phone lines what do you think I agree to our viewers at home, the number to call is on your screen. That number is 800-779-1942. We know that you're sitting in the viewing audience today, perhaps having a cup of coffee with your spouse, and you're wondering if you should pick up the phone and call in. You've worked your entire lives to get to the retirement years, and you deserve to have the retirement of your dreams. You're being offered a complimentary consultation, and all you have to do is call in 800-779-1942. Also, if you have your smartphone handy, go ahead, grab it, click on the QR code at the bottom corner of your screen. That'll take you right to the landing page. So please don't miss this opportunity to book that complimentary consultation. We're going to take a very short commercial break. When we come back, we have more about market recovery, so stay tuned. What does your retirement look like? Is it filled with travel, spending time with family, uninterrupted rounds at the golf course, or are you too worried to even think about your hopes and dreams? Eric and his team can answer your questions with a complimentary review of your retirement and income plan, and it all starts with getting to know you. They'll do exactly that by going over your current strategy to expose the weaknesses that may exist in your retirement portfolio. Plus, they'll explain potential risks and possible strategies to you in easy to understand terms and help get you reacquainted with your portfolio and income strategy. Once they understand your retirement goals, objectives, and dreams, they'll work to custom build a retirement plan to help ensure that you cannot outlive your income in retirement. Because every dream needs a plan. Call Eric today and schedule your visit. You only retire once, so let's get it right the first time. And welcome back to Retirement Talk with Eric Carney. My name is Cynthia DeFazio, and I'm joined today by Eric Carney and Joseph Lanza of Retirement Wealth Advisors. A wonderful show we're having today talking about such an important topic, market recovery. So I have to ask you a question, Eric. Obviously, we've heard so much about the 60-40 portfolio. Yeah. Is that allocation still relevant? I don't think so. I mean, okay. you know, like I said, people want to know that they're relevant, right? So you can't get hung up on, you know, I need a 60 40 because this is what my parents had. This is a different market. This is a different stock market. The tools, investment products, and all the investments out there are significantly different than it was when our parents retired. So the thing is, is that you want to make sure that you have an up to date allocation that you can actually change. 
And the common denominator is when the markets tumble or correct or go through a tizzy, whatever they want to do, the common denominator is people want one thing, and that's to be able to recover. Mm. And if you really take a look at a half a million dollar portfolio, and you're down 20%, you're now down to 400,000. The problem is if you're down 20%, now you actually have to come back 25% to get back to even. Because you're, if you're down 20 and you only recover 20, the 400,000 is only worth 480,000. And when people are like, I never even thought about it that way. What if you could reduce your losses on the way down and then all of a sudden implement the portfolio recovery strategy and have the wherewithal to come back, not only to where you were, but past where you were. So this is the power of a portfolio recovery strategy, having something where you can implement and take advantage of something. And the bottom line is, is that like I always say, People prefer progression over perfection. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever perfect. There's too many moving parts. But there's a lot of people who are losing, um, they're losing a lot of confidence in their current investment firm because they're not giving them a portfolio recovery strategy. They're not helping them get out of the hole. And unfortunately, it's human nature. When things get bad, we want to get more conservative. Why would you go into a bond fund when interest rates are so tumultuous right now? Why would you go into a bond fund when inflation's through the roof? There's got to be another alternative. And the problem is, is that when people get so conservative, when the market actually recovers, there's no alpha in that portfolio to ever give them a chance to recover. Mm. And this is truly where education has to come in. I am a pretty laid back person, but I will sit with you all day long until you truly understand what we're capable of, but how more importantly, how we want to help you. And this is what people are migrating towards. I will say one thing about this year, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. It's refreshing to have people return to traditional financial planning. Mm -hmm. They're tired of SPAC stocks. They've gotten away from those. Thank God. They've gotten away from speculative stocks. They've gotten away from cryptocurrency. There's just so many things out there. People actually think that there's a short shortcut to getting wealthy, and there's not. Mm -hmm. It's through strategic financial planning, income planning, reduces your taxes, understanding how much you're spending on a regular basis, but building a pragmatic plan that's going to get you through difficult times. And so, you know, a lot of times our clients will call and say, they'll say, hey, I want to buy this. And I'm like, oh, it changes the dynamics of their portfolio. If it's really bad, I try to talk them out of it, you know. And again, it's their money, but we have to guide them and advise them. And the past 12 to 18 months, I've gotten to the point where I'm not afraid to say to someone, look, are you asking for my advice or are you just telling me to do this? Mm -hmm. Because basically when I say that, they understand that I'm not agreeing with this. And I don't want to put anything that's toxic in their portfolio. If the markets are down, I want to show them how we can acceptably recover from there. And that's why this portfolio recovery strategy is so important. Mm, Eric, I want to talk to you as well. I hear investors talk about frequently is lowering their standard of deviation. What is standard deviation and how do you lower it? Yeah, so standard deviation is pretty much what I was talking about before. It's just a big word for volatility. Mm. So when you're throwing in all these speculative investments and all these SPAC stocks and this even the cryptocurrency, it's all of a sudden shooting the volatility in your portfolio <clears throat> through the roof. Nobody wants that. And you know, I had a very good friend of mine who had $2 million of cryptocurrency in Tampa. And I literally sat down with him and I said, okay, let's sell half of that and buy something that's tangible. And he refused. And look at where cryptocurrency is today. True. And he avoids the conversation that we had about that. Hmm. And all I'm doing, trying to do is take the emotion out of investing. But unfortunately, when it comes to investing, our emotions get in the way and we end up making very bad choices. That's the problem with emotions and volatility is we're trying to extract that from there. And now all of a sudden we can make better decisions. But again, um, I, I see where people are like, okay, I've had enough of this. Mm -hmm. I want to get back to this and I want to know that I'm okay. Mm, thank you, Eric. Joseph, obviously everyone would like to have a higher rate of return, but mm -hmm. they're a little nervous about taking on too much risk. 
How do you help balance that? Right, so we start with analyzing both your current risk and the performance of the account. We start mm -hmm. to look at the different positions that make up your account and see how we can improve both your risk by maybe reducing it and your performance by maybe increasing that. So with those positions that you're invested in, we can start to get rid of the ones that are making you maybe too aggressive, and we can start replacing those with ones that fit much more in line with your financial plan. And something that helps us do this is within the personal financial blueprint, there's something we look at called the Sharp Ratio. And the Sharp Ratio is named after William Sharp, who is a world-renowned economist. And what mm. this tells us is your risk-adjusted rate of return, meaning if you're taking on risk in the market, you should be getting a certain amount of return for that. Mm. So this helps us determine, and we see clients come in all the time who they find out that their portfolio is way more aggressive than they ever realized it was, yet the rate of return is subpar and it's not living up to that. Mm. So if you feel like your portfolio is too <clears> aggressive <throat> for you and you're not receiving that rate of return that you should be, make sure you give us a call today to get your very own personal financial blueprint and we can go over your very own Sharpe ratio and ways to improve that with you. Mm, thank you, Joseph. Eric, what happens when a husband and wife have a different philosophy of how much risk should be taken? Can we talk a little bit about that for our married couples that are in the viewing audience today? Yeah, that's, that's a great subject. And, you know, there is somewhat of marriage counseling in this. Yeah. And a lot of times what we're saying is, is that the husband's a little bit more aggressive, the wife is conservative, she doesn't want to lose anything. But here's what happens. They both agree on their lifestyle. So mm. what we're going to do now is we want to take into consideration she may be very conservative, he may be a little bit more aggressive. There's actually a way to marry the two together and give them what they want. So again, it's, it's about building a pragmatic plan. We're constantly um, aggregating all this data and we're trying to put together a plan that is sustainable for them, but it also brings them on the same page. And there's a lot of times, again, where they leave the office and they're like, Eric, we feel a lot better about this. We understand where we are. And so I think some people actually get intimidated by this. I don't think people realize how many moving parts there are to financial planning. Mm. I mean, behind the scenes, what's going on for a lot of our clients is intense. I mean, you've got financial management, you've got tax planning, you've got income planning, you've got financial planning. How are we going to get over all these hurdles? you got health care issues, long-term care issues. Um, there's just so many moving parts that every day that we come into work, it's something completely different. So again, when we take a husband and a wife, we understand that. Now, there's also people that are coming in from second and third, and, and even in Florida, we have fourth marriages, right? Okay. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, that's Florida. So, you know, we have to factor in that too. So, you know, there, there's money that we're commingling and so forth, and we have to get each other on the same page with that. Mm. Joseph, we've talked about what happens during the first consultation and how long a person can plan to expect. What happens on the follow-up visit before we reopen mm -hmm. the phone lines? Well, this is where we really start to have fun, Eric and I, where we can sit down in the meeting and we've put together their basic income plan at this point and we've put together their personal financial blueprint where we're gonna go over that with them. So there's two sides that you're getting right away in your second meeting and that's an analysis on your current portfolio and a start, a preliminary income plan to see if there's gonna be any of those roadblocks in your retirement with how much income you're getting how much it's going to cost you. So right away, you're getting a little bit of best of both worlds, the investment side of it and the planning side of it from our firm. Mm, gentlemen, thank you so much. Perfect time for us to reopen the phone lines. To our viewers at home, the number to call is once again on your screen. That number is 800-779-1942. We know that you have a lot of questions for Eric and Joseph about how to plan your perfect retirement. They are offering you a complimentary consultation. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call in today 1-800-779-1942. Or if you have your smartphone close by, go ahead and grab that. Click on the QR code in the bottom corner of your screen. That'll take you right to the landing page of Retirement Wealth Advisors. We're going to take a very short commercial break, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, I'm going to talk to Eric and Joseph about hidden fees. Stay tuned.